Okay, without further ado, um, can I introduce our first speaker um, this afternoon, uh, Mr. Gerno Pauli, uh, who's Chief Engineer uh, for the Central Commission for Navigation of the Rhine um, in Germany. Gerno holds a master's degree in mechanical engineering uh, and also, interestingly, in public administration from Harvard University. Um, so we have something of a hybrid with us, um, a politically astute engineer, <laughs> not a lawyer. Um, Gerner, um, looking very much uh, forward to hearing your presentation, please. Yes, hello, good afternoon, and um, welcome to the graveyard shift. Um, graveyard, you know, that is when people close their eyes, yeah. Um, I uh, want to present you what we, as the Central Commission for the Navigation of the Rhine um, and the shipping industry um, on the Rhine, did for decarbonizing um, inland navigation. <clears throat> Here you see um, the Rhine. Actually, the Rhine serves especially the um, big seaports of Rotterdam and Antwerp, um, also a bit of Amsterdam and it's very important for the hinterland, um, hinterland um, transport up to Switzerland. The, the Rhine is um, a rather small river, I, I like to say. Um, you see it is um, only 125 in the world, yeah, but, um, and the navigation, navigable part is very short. Um, it is, that's an interesting question, it's international. So does it fall under the international shipping? Does it fall under the Paris Agreement or not? Yeah. We had this discussion this morning. Yeah. Um, what I also tend to say and like to say, it is um, the Rhine as a waterway is very successful. We stand for about um, three quarters or more of all um, um, inland water transport in Europe. And more than 50% of um, international freight in the transport corridor is um, inland navigation. So um, inland navigation carries more cross-border than rail and road together. <clears throat> My organization, maybe you have heard of it, it's the oldest international organization in the world. We have celebrated our 200th birthday. And um, <clears throat> already our age tells us that we are very interesting and in actually are realizing sustainability. Uh, um, we, the, the organization was founded to, uh, to, to promote freedom of navigation. Um, we created um, for, for, for the Rhine a um, uh, single market, level playing field, something that came only um, 60 years ago um, in a broader sense into Europe um, with the European um, Union. Concerning our, our, topic, our topics for this um, conference here, um, climate change, um, some years ago the um, CCNR developed um, its strategy for reducing fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emissions from inland navigation and um, by doing so or for doing so developed an extensive report and um, the presentation is based on, on this report. In order to, to give you an idea where we stand with the, um, with the carbon footprint of inland navigation, I um, developed this, um, uh, this uh, graph. And here you can see that um, inland navigation, um, I'm sorry, I'm too fast, inland navigation um, here um, is um, actually, when it comes at least to the, to, to the, to the modern vessels, right in the same um, area as, as um, rail, and even um, um, almost as rail with um, electric traction, and of course much better than, than um, road transport. You have noticed that there was a big description, um, so the smallest and the biggest emission in, um, uh, in, um, from, from inland navigation, and here you see the reason. Um, 
the emissions, the energy consumption in, um, in relation to, to the ton kilometers, so to the performance, um, and we said also the CO2 emissions depend very much on the size on the, of the vessel. You see, when, when we um, put the smallest, the, the peniche, um, to 100% um, of, of fuel consumption per ton kilometer, then you see that, um, that the large vessels on the Rhine um, have only a fraction um, of this. So that, that is to show you that um, vessel size uh, may be the most important factor for reduction of specific um, energy um, uh, consumption. And um, the CCNR supports the move towards um, larger vessels, so increasing um, vessel size. Um, that is really taking place, as you can see in, um, on the lower left corner in the graph, where over the years the, the average vessel size has um, increased. And um, on the right-hand side, you, you, you get a graphical um, impression of um, what quality of waterway um, we want to provide um, for the vessels. And here I want to point out one special um, feature. It is, it is not only the width of the fairway or the depth of the fairway that we um, uh, uh, take account of, but very important for us is also the bridge height. And that is a minimum nine meters ten about most of the Rhine. And why is that important? Because that determines how many containers a vessel can carry. And um, because um, the bridges over the Rhine are that high, um, we, the, the Rhine is, is, a, is a very important player in the container transport um, for, for the hinterland traffic of the big um, seaports. But of course, the, the bridge height was not determined for, for container transport. It was 100, more than 100 years ago when the 9 meter 10 was set. Um, that was when the first bridge over the modern bridge over the Rhine was built. Um, no, it was because vessels at the same time, they had a very high mast for, for several reasons. And um, the ship owner um, um, demanded um, that they don't, do not need to take down their mast, and so they wanted this, that bridge height. So it was not the container, uh, layers of container, but it was the mast of the vessel that, that determined the bridge height. But very much um, foresight. Yeah, also, it's not only um, the fairway, um, but even so, it's very important to determine um, fuel consumption. Um, but also there are many operational measures um, that you can use to, to reduce it even further. Um, and um, we do not do on, on in inland navigation, we do not do, for example, slow steaming, we do smart steaming. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is the difference between slow and, and smart steaming? Um, the fuel consumption depends very much also on the water depth, and because that is not um, it's the same all over the, 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 the stretch of the water that you sail, so you go faster where the water is deeper, and you go slower where the water is not so deep. But um, in order to do so, you need to have very good information about the waterway, and there is um, where the um, uh, Central Commission became um, very active and um, um, to provide um, this um, accurate information about traffic and fairway to allow the skipper um, to, um, to use those uh, operational measures that are available to him to, to reduce um, um, the fuel consumption and visit uh, the, the carbon um, footprint. What are those um, um, measures for providing the information? And here's actually a strong connection to Piang. Um, we use what we call river information services um, uh, for providing those information. And this concept of um, river information services that was, um, among others, um, developed in the context um, of, of Piang. And, um, as a CCNR, we did not only develop, um, were part of the development of those concepts, but also we created the legal framework for the implementation. And so these days on the Rhine, 
all vessels have to have um, IIS, so this um, automatic information system that tells you exactly where the vessel is, um, um, with speed, direction, and so on. And um, all vessels um, on, the, on the Rhine have to have an electronic chart to um, show um, all the information necessary for, for safe and uh, efficient um, sailing. And of course, um, there is um, what we call notices to skippers. So there is information for the skippers um, on, um, on stretches on the water and so on. Another important way to, to reduce um, uh, the carbon footprint, of course, is um, alternative fuels. And actually, if you want to achieve um, the goals of, of Paris Agreement, um, there is no way around it. You have to go away from, from mineral oil um, fuels and find other ones. Um, here you can see um, a possible strategy how to do that. Um, so you cannot just switch from one to the other um, to, to low carbon fuels, um, even if they would be available commercially, which they aren't yet. Um, but it will be, it is a stepwise approach and the CCNR has, um, was at the forefront of doing um, the, the first um, important step and that was um, allowing um, the use of, of LNG, of liquid natural gas. Um, fuel is um, very safety sensitive in, in the navigation and um, so, um, so far um, mostly um, gas oil is allowed um, as a fuel for inland navigation, um, but now on the Rhine or with the Rhine um, vessel certificate, um, you can also use LNG. Here you see two pictures. First is the first vessel in Europe actually using LNG, and the second uh, picture above is the fueling um, um, of a LNG powered vessel from, uh, from a tank drink. We are also now working on, on um, fuels that are actually um, contribute to um, reducing the carbon um, footprint and, um, main, um, and that uh, is, is methanol and, and hydrogen. So that the industry can uh, gain some experience with those fuels and hopefully also us as, as a regulator. Does decarbonizing inland navigation work? Um, we think it, it works. I um, have you provided with an example. This is a, um, a, a convoy of a self-propelled vessel with a, with a barge um, from roughly 30 years ago. And some years ago, it was replaced for a tr special transport uh, task um, um, carrying um, Eisenhower from Rotterdam to the Luxembourg area. Um, with um, such a very modern um, uh, combination. And um, that reduced the um, fuel consumption and with it the, um, uh, the carbon footprint by um, 40%. But also very helpful was in this context that um, the fairway was improved so that the, um, that the um, um, push convoy could also carry more, um, more, more cargo in one go. But also we have to admit that, um, that the work of decarbonizing is very complex. Um, I spoke about LNG. Um, when we developed the, the rules for LNG, we actually found out that it doesn't do any good for the climate. In, um, in inland navigation, um, the technology of the engine is so that um, we have, um, in order to re reduce the fuel consumption, um, we have to take into account methane slip, and methane is a, um, a very potent climate gas, and so um, what you reduce on CO2 um, you increase um, or you compensate basically in a negative sense um, by, by missing. It also takes a long time, so the average age of a vessel on the Rhine is probably 40 to 50 years. 
So you can imagine how long it takes to renew the fleet to get new technology um, in the market. And recently, because of economic problems, um, the renewal rate has even lowered. We are now with 100 years. Yeah. Um, it is ad hoc. We do not have a, a plan, a strategy, which um, neither from the state side nor from, from um, um, the sector. Um, and of course, it's very expensive because you have to totally renew the fleet. I come to the lessons learned. Um, modern inland navigation vessels have a small carbon footprint similar to, to rail and thus by um, uh, um, shifting cargo from the road to, um, to inland navigation certainly contributes to climate change mitigation. Inland navigation can do much more to reduce uh, the carbon footprint, as you have seen from um, the um, example, but also the fairway managers, by, um, by developing the fairway in, uh, in this sense, can contribute to that. If we want to, to um, support the goals of the, the Paris Agreement, we need different fuels. There is no way around it. We cannot do that with mineral oil. Um, but um, mo most importantly, I guess we need a joint strategy by government and the private sector. We need data. We have very little reliable data about fuel consumption and emissions from inland navigation, at least here in Europe. We need lots of money, meaning we need uh, to have financing models that actually allows, allows the sector to, to, um, to adapt and um, last not but least um, effective um, policies. If you want to find out more, go to our website um, where the report is, um, can be downloaded that I was talking about. And um, basically, thank you for your attention. And I think nobody closed his eyes. Yeah.